Welcome to Ekidia Delhi, MWC Ekekwe. A conversation today will focus on the smile and call, value redesign in the global automobile sector. Essentially, we'll be looking at uh, how technology continues to change where value is created in organizations. We'll be looking at it at the industrial level or sectoral level. I'll take you into the PC industry. How companies that operated here, essentially the typical PC manufacturers like Lenovo and companies that also assemble devices for other companies like Foscon. So these companies actually earn value, but unfortunately the value they earn is not necessarily very high. The companies that make the integrated circuits or the chips, they bring that power. The, the, the PCs or the smartphone or the devices that we use today are companies that actually create more value in the PC industry. So, so they make these chips and these chips power uh, our devices and they generate higher margin building businesses which are essentially at better positions to actually make more as a fraction of the total value of the components or of the products like a PC. Now, these companies are heavy on patents. They are heavy on intellectual property and they create a lot of value and they make money. Intel remains a dominant one. There are also companies like Qualcomm companies like Broadcom, NVIDIA, and there are so many of them. Now, at the other end, you have companies that are now taking these pieces, personal computers, the domain of services like Accenture, Tata System, Infosys. These companies also generate and create value. So what is happening here is that value is created here and here. Why companies that are operating here significantly see lesser value? Now, this redesign is taking shape in the automobile industry where we are seeing driverless cars. Companies like Ford, Nissan, these are the traditional car companies. A couple of these cars, they make all these cars that we use today. Then there are companies that supply modern technologies like mobile. Mobile, which Intel owns, is a come of the components that are used in driverless cars. It's also Samsung, which bought Heyman, Heyman, which is a company that makes technologies that are used in connected cars. So we are going to see more value being created here, than like here, in the next coming years. And now companies are now pick all the pieces together, put them together, like Waymo, owned by Google. Uber are going to become very dominant. So the implication of that is that these companies can just be making the cars, while companies here will be seeing higher margin, while companies here will also be seeing greater margin. So if these companies here like Nissan and Ford do not redesign their businesses, they will be like PC companies that are perpetually within the low margin business because they won't want that to happen. So what do they have to do? They need to figure out how they will begin to move from here where value is very low to here. And that's why some of them like GM, General Motors, Ford, everyone is trying to get into the driverless cars. They, they understand that the redesign is going to be extremely huge. And they understand that the disruption is going to be extremely consequential. So they want to get into the game. There is a reason for that. If you look at the number, let's say for instance, Toyota sell Yaris, one of their low-end vehicles for $10,000. Maybe to you or Google or whatever, or which company that buys it. Let's say from out of that $10,000, Toyota is making $1,000. Or maybe it's the example that is also participating in driver as car that buys it. There is a possibility that Arco could turn that $10,000 car he has bought from Toyota. 
the end of the day, when it was redesigned and transforming it to a driver vehicle, he said the cost is now fifteen thousand dollars. Apple will now impose a three thousand dollar margin on that business. So the Toyota that produced that car is making one thousand dollars on margin. Why Apple has picked that vehicle and now creating three thousand dollars, and that is exactly what happens in iPhone. iPhone picks all the pieces. This company couples the iPhone. Apple generate tons of money for every iPhone sold, while this man, this company here, remains at a very, very low marginal level. It employs about 1.3 million people around the world. Apple doesn't need even a fraction of that, who doesn't employ up to 10% of that. But Apple turns nearly more than $200 billion in revenue every year. More than the total of what Foscom makes in a year. Foscom is around more than 100, around 170 billion. That's a still significant. But the point I'm saying is this it needs about 1.3 million people to generate lesser revenue than Apple actually generates, typically by using about less than 10% of the total manpower that Foscom makes. So the profit margin of this company is severely depressed because of the total number of manpower users. Apple operates at this level. The app store is here. The special chips that power the microbus that power the iPhone, the A series chips, is somewhere here. And that is it. The business is changing, and we are going to see that in automobile industry. If they continue to stay here. These guys will eat the cake. These guys will eat cake. And the industry can't be understand. You're listening to the